Hello once again and welcome to the Amalgamated with Christ Church where the purpose statement remains the same. To bring people back into fellowship with God through Jesus Christ. I know that we should have been going into singleness but we're going to detour a little bit tonight. We're going to speak about God, religion and spirituality. God, religion and spirituality. Because these days, it's um, many people talk about God. They don't know who God is, but they talk about God. People talk about religion and people talk about spirituality. As a matter of fact, most people are spiritual. And most people practice a sort of a religion. And most people believe in a God. But when you speak about the true one living God and the holy God, then you must separate and you must be able to recognize the true one living God. And you must be able to recognize that the religion of the true one holy God is holiness. And you must be able to recognize what it means when one is spiritual according to biblical standard. Because in truth and in fact, yes, God is outside of religion and God is outside of spirituality. When we speak about God, many people don't know who we're talking about. But when we speak about God, we're talking about the personal creator. We're talking about the one that created everything. And without him, nothing would have been in existence. Because the scripture says right here, when you talk about God, you're talking about the ultimate creator. John chapter 1, it says in verse 2, in the beginning, in the beginning he was with God. All things were made through him and without him nothing was made that was made. And the true and living God is always available, he is always present with us. It's not that you go and you leave your God somewhere. You leave your God in your house, locked away in your closet. Or leave your God in your garage, locked away in your garage. And so you are feeling weary because you have something to do when you forget your God, which you call your lucky charm. Some people can't function without their lucky charm in their pocket because that is your God. They got to rub it. Some people got to wear it. But when you're talking about the true one living God that is always present, is always knowing, is always powerful. You're talking about the true and the holy God that is the creator of all things. The true and holy God that says right here in Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 5. You go down and says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I just pick up the last portion of the verse. I will never leave you nor forsake you. But in order for him to be with you. For in order for him to know who he is. You look up at the top of the, script, the verse where it says, Let your conduct be without covetousness. Let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content. And the person who, who, who recognizes the true and living God that is always with us, they understand that it doesn't matter anywhere, anytime they can hear him. Because the scripture says right here in John chapter 8 verse 47. He who is of God hears God. Hears God's word. Therefore you do not hear God because you are not of him. What am I saying? I'm saying if you recognize who God is. First thing you must come to the understanding and come to the knowledge. As the scripture says in John chapter 1. That without him there was nothing made that was made. Then the next thing you got to understand that he's always present with us. The scripture says that he will never leave us nor forsake us. And the other thing that you must understand is that in order for you to recognize him, you must be able to hear him. And to hear him, your conduct must be circumspect. Your conduct must be without covetousness. Your conduct must be fitting of what it means to be holy. And that's who God is. Holiness. 
And so many people today, when they speak about God, they mix it up. But we just clarify that if your God is not the true and living God, if you're not subscribed to holiness, then you're just worshiping a God. Because you have many gods and you even have the God of this age, which is Satan the dragon, the scripture tells us in, in the book of Corinthians. Many people today, they do not ascribe to the true and living God, but they are religious. Meaning they belong to a religion. Meaning they have certain rituals, certain behaviors that they practice. Something to keep them in tune. Because you see, human beings, we are, we are spiritual beings. And so it's the natural aspect, it's a natural part of man to want to worship, to want to be drawn. I don't care who you are. Even if you say you don't believe in God or you don't worship God, you have some spirituality within you. It's easy for you to draw on something and you're going to call it luck. Are you going to call it your charm? But that is a ritual. And so many of us, many of us today, as I said, I'm going off into spiritual, but I really want to focus on religion. We spoke about God. God is so huge, I can't really describe God. I just got to tell you that God is present with us and we tell you the, the scripture where it says that he will never leave us or forsake us and that you have to hear his voice to recognize that he is God and to show you that he is the personal creator of everything. Without him, nothing made that was made. The scripture said that. And so religion, to be something, to be someone that is religious and subscribe to a religion, it means that we are worshipping a supernatural force. Personal God are gods, because you can be worshipping the true and living God, but you are just a religious person. And many people in the world, we have ancestral spirituality, we have ancestral and religion. And we practice all sort of stuff. Because we want that relationship. And for those who proclaim that they are spiritual. Meaning that they believe in some sort of a supernatural force. They believe in some sort of supernatural force. They believe that it takes a higher power for something to, to happen. Some people believe in karma. That is outside of human realms. Where does karma come from if you don't believe in a supernatural force? But if you believe in a true and living God, you're not into karma because you realize that God is the author and finisher of all faith. God dwells outside or resides outside of man's religion and man's spirituality. Jesus never called none of us to be spiritual or called any of us to be a religious sort of a person. Jesus called each and every one of us to holiness. The scripture tells you that in no uncertain terms. So many people go around and they're practicing what they call a religion or practicing spirituality you're not doing as the scripture says your duty is to ascribe to holiness first peter chapter 1 and verse 15 or verse 16 look at it it says because it is written be holy for as i am holy and verse 15, it said, but he who calls you is holy. Who calls us? God calls us to holiness. And if he calls us to holiness, that is his attribute, that is his characteristics. And so you must describe God according to his characteristics, not, not, not according to what you believe, not your religion, not what you want to, to make God into being. It is written, be holy, for I am holy. So God resides outside of religion and spirituality. And so if you are a follower of Christ, if you subscribe to what, to what the word is saying, to what the Bible is saying, to what the Holy Scripture is saying, you understand this. It's not a religion that you're following. 
It's not a religion that you should owe allegiance to. Because religion, religion is cre was created by man. And within religion, you have different facets, different organization. Religion, religion is also used to promote an agenda. To promote a political agenda. To promote a culture. To promote, to promote something so man can be in control. But God is in control. And so someone that is religious, they are going to tell you that you should do this. And they laid on all the rules. Just as when God gave us the Ten Commandments way back then and it morphed into over 630. The don'ts outdo the do's. The reason for that? Because man was religious and man was practicing their own religion, not holiness. And so Jesus Christ came on the scene here to clarify, to fulfill, and to point us into the right direction. So now there is no excuse for us. Look at Leviticus 20 and verse 7. Once again, I said, God call us to be holy. From way back in the Old Testament, it's all about holiness. Leviticus 20 and verse 7 says, Consecrate yourself, therefore, be holy, for I am the Lord your God. Be holy. The Lord God Almighty instructed the, Israel, the Israelites way back then in the Old Testament, and it's the same for us today. Be holy, God says, for I am holy. Not be religious. Not be spiritual, not practice ancestral spirituality, not practice your own doing, not spinning your role, but be holy for I am holy. And so in order for us to be holy and to reflect the image of God, we cannot be religious or spiritual. No, we can't be religious or spiritual. Because when you are religious, you have a devotion to rituals and not to God. When you are religious, your devotion is to rituals and not to God. And so you'll find some religious sex you can go win unless you dress a certain way, unless you wear a certain color, unless you offer certain sacrifices or bring certain things. But that has nothing to do with what God instruct man to do. That has nothing to do with holiness. That's something that's created by man and it's passed down. And so you'll find a lot of religious organizations now has nothing to do with holiness. Because people, even in some churches that are religious, people are put into position of leadership outside of the prescription of the Bible. Outside of what the Bible prescribes. They don't look at the character of man to promote. What they look at, they look at is, 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 is credentials. You have a doctorate, so you must be able to fill the position. You went to this, that seminary, not just seminary down the street, but you went to the top tier, the top echelon, and so you must be able to fulfill this. You know Greek, you know Amharic, you know Hebrew, so you must be able to stand in the pulpit. That's not the characteristics. That's not what it was. There is nowhere in the scripture where it tells you that a man must be a man must be put up or, or put into the position of leadership just because of, 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 of his, 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 his credentials. Nowhere in the scripture I say that. And therefore, if you are religious, you will fall prey to these sort of stuff. But when you are truly, truly, truly a child of God, you're going, to, you're going to follow the scripture word for word. You're going to. You're going to. You can't do anything outside of the scriptures. You can't do anything outside of the scriptures, brothers and sisters. When you are just, when I said again, let me reinforce. When you are religious, you may just have a... You may just have a devotion to rituals. Not to God. 
but to rituals. And some people even know that it's, these things are wrong. But guess what? Because it's a devotion, because it's tradition, they continue to push them. They continue to, 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 to use it to promote. And that's not of God, my brothers and sisters. That's not of God. So you don't come to church and believe that because you, you know Hebrew, you know Greek, you know this, you know that. Then you're going to be put into leadership. It's based on your character. And so if you're following after the scripture, it must be according to the scripture. Because the scripture, for example, in Titus, book of Titus, it gives you the characteristics for a man that is going to be an elder or a preacher today. The scripture says, um, Titus chapter 1, it says, if a man, this is talking about an elder, if a man is blameless, the husband of one wife, having faithful children, not accused as dissipation or insubordination, for a bishop, a man must be blameless. As a steward of God, not self-willed, not quick-tempered, not given to wine, not violent, nor greedy for money, but hospitable, a lover of what is good, sober-minded. You can read the rest for yourself. And we see many men today in religious organizations, they do not fulfill those characteristics. And so that is the reason the things of God is outside of religion and it's outside of spirituality. Not because you're educated, it does not mean you're fit, does not mean you're qualified to fulfill the role. Acts chapter 17, verses 22 to 24. Let's take a look. This was the Apostle Paul. He was speaking to a whole bunch <coughs> of educated people. Acts 22. Paul stood up. And I go down in the verse and said, Men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you are very religious. These men were religious men. These men were educated men. You could not just be any and any person and stand right there and speak. You must be someone or somebody. They're educated. Many educated people form allegiance and they form their own religion. How many religious cults you see today being led by educated people? That has nothing to do with God. That has nothing to do with a true and living God. But it has to do with man's ego. Because you know, when you are in charge, it feels good. And because many people in society are just naturally spiritual beings, people take advantage. They go up and they will say, I have this message from the Lord for you. And they talk about any and everything leading people astray. Leading them outside of the true and living God. When you have allegiance to anything outside of holiness, to anyone, to any man outside of Jesus Christ, outside of God, the wrath of God will come upon you. Jeremiah said this in Jeremiah 10 verse 10. But the Lord is the true God. He is a living God. And the everlasting king. Jeremiah said at his wrath the hurt will tremble. And the nation will not be able to endure his indignation. So when you see you have your little vial in your pocket. Your little thing that you rub because you want to get by. Thinking that you can pull one off. That's not the living God. What you have in your pocket will not make anything tremble. The true and living God at his right, the earth will tremble. God is so good, the man Solomon, who we designated as the wisest man in the world. He himself, he even come to the conclusion that what the Lord God has ordained or what God has made crooked, he questioned it. Who can make it straight? 
Because what God put into place, it cannot be changed. As I said, go back to Acts chapter 17. Paul was standing in the midst of religious people. In the midst of religious people. Look at verse 22 again. In the midst of a religious city. In the midst of Athens, Greece. And you know that's the seat of philosophy. Great philosophers come from out of that city, you know. Even today, there are some monuments that stand in. And people talk about them, even today. Many of those, of those philosophers, men like Aristotle, they'll tell you about. And all these other philosophers. And Paul stood in the midst of them. The city was full of men who were of their own mindset, chasing after what they thought was good. Paul said to them, I perceive that in all things, in all things, that you are very religious. But though they were religious, that same city was filled with idols. That same city was filled with things that was not of God. Paul was in a meeting being conducted to the Greek god of thunder and war. Then he said, then Paul stood in the midst of the Arabagos and said, men of Athens, I perceive. Can you imagine the Greek god of war and thunder? And here is Paul talking, I perceive that you are religious. Paul addressed their religious and spirituality by pointing it out. And, and highlighting what they were doing. I perceive that you're religious, but your religion is worthless. And according to the prophet Isaiah, when we encounter religion that is worthless, you cannot pretend as uh, uh, if, if it comes into your place, comes into your face. You cannot pretend like it's acceptable. And we see many people doing those things today, going into church and they see rituals happening. Going into church and seeing people doing blood sacrifice, start from a finger, finger prick to animal sacrifice, then human sacrifice, and people sit down and watch these things because of religious behavior. What did the prophet Isaiah say in 58? Cry aloud, spear not, lift up your voice like a trumpet. Tell my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. That was then, we're talking, using it to today's day principle. You sit down in the church and you see them offering up blood sacrifices and all these things that the scripture denounces, and you sit down keeping quiet. The scripture tells you that if you are designated as the watchman and you don't warn the city, you don't warn the inhabitants, then their blood will be on your shoulders. But if you warn them and they don't listen to you, then they are responsible for their deeds. And so cry aloud, lift your voice like a trumpet, tell them their transgression. If you proclaim to know God, if you proclaim to know God through Jesus Christ, but you're being controlled by the flesh, you will not cry aloud. Because you'll want to sit down because I don't want to offend anybody. This is the church that I'm going. This is the church that my, my, baby, got, my baby got dedicated into. This is where I'm going to be church when I'm dead. I don't want to rock the boat. I'm going to get a position of deacon one day in this place. Because you're living for yourself. You're walking in the flesh. And when you're walking in the flesh, you're not being controlled by God. Galatians 5 tells you, verse 16, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the loss of the flesh. The reason for that, because you're contrary to each other. So if you proclaim to know God, when you see religious things or you see things happening inside your, right in your midst, right in your intimate space, you can't sit down and fold your hands and pretend. You can't be in the church where they're doing this nastiness. Bringing 
into the church spirituality and all different sort of things and you accept it. Coming in and sprinkling a little thing here, sprinkling a little thing there, lighting some candles there, burning some incense there, killing chickens here, sprinkling bones there, doing all sort of stuff, speaking in strange tongues sort of deal, but because there's no discernment, because it's full of flesh. And so you fall prey. And you refuse. Sometimes you really see it, but you don't want to say anything to it. But I tell you what. There will come a time when you will be held responsible. Acts 17. Talking to you religious people. And people don't want to denounce certain slackness. Even in your own household. Acts 17 verse 30. Truly these times of ignorance God overlook. The times of ignorance God overlook. So going to church won't save you because you think you're religious. Saying you're spiritual and believing ancestral spirituality, it will not save you. Worshiping the unknown forces in nature, it will not save you. Rubbing the little vial in your pocket, it will not save you. Wearing your favorite socks will not save you. Rubbing your favorite stone will not save you. And people have this habit these days. When you're on the job, everybody wants to, 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 en to encourage the force. They want to enforce the force. Rub a little stone here. I think I encountered, I encountered a stone rubbing once in my life too. Rub a little stone here. Feel the energy. And everybody are like, they're like hypocrite rubbing stones. Rubbing stones pretending you can't do those things. And then you say you belong to God. You can't do it. The time of ignorance, the scripture says. The time of ignorance, it will be overlooked. God won't overlook them anymore, I should say. Yeah, you're jumping and shouting now because I said it will be overlooked. I misspoke. God won't overlook them anymore. You will be punished. Believe it or not, you will be punished. He said, preacher man, you're doing it and you're saying some hard things. Listen, rubbing up your stone, that's borderline sorcery. Talking about the power of the stone, the power of the rock. Put your energy into it. Can you feel it? What did God say to the prophet Micaiah? And, he, pre and he, he, he presented that to us. Micaiah chapter 5 verse 12. I will cut off sorceries from your hand. And you shall have no soothsayers. You know who is a soothsayer? Those people who like to work the magic. Soothsayers. Now they are everywhere. People can have their reading. Rub their stone. Get your favorite little, get it man, it's a, get, get your little charm, put it in your purse, it will bring you good luck. And people who belong or should belong to God, they're participating in those things. That's a religious mindset. You see, we spoke of God earlier and we said that God is a personal creator. God is the creator of creation. Without him, there was nothing made that was made. And we said that God is everywhere. He said, behold, I will never leave you or forsake you. And we said that if you belong to him, you will hear his voice. But if you don't hear his voice, if you're clouded, you will go around rubbing stones. You'll go around doing those weird dancing in your church. Speaking in the tongues of demon, uttering doctrines of demon in your church. You'll do those things, doing blood sacrifices in the church. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. And so the prophet tell you what the Lord God Almighty is going to do. I will cut off sorcery from your hand sorcery in church today but it's normalized and you shall have no soothsayers mm -hmm. and woe be those of you who are participating in this prosperity religion you think you think you're not being touched you're being touched 
Because that's not of God. All you do is get up every day and all you do is preach prosperity, preach prosperity day in, day out, day in, day out, day in, day out, day in, day out. No repentance. No repentance. Did Jesus come to Jesus come to bring prosperity to man? Jesus come to bring that repentance to man. Repentance to man. Men were already prospering before Jesus came. You had a whole lot of rich people before Jesus came. People were rich and going to hell. What did Jesus do? What did Jesus preach? Jesus preach? You really want to know? Matthew chapter 4, verse 17. From the moment Jesus began to preach and say, Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. So if you go to church every day and all you want to hear is prosperity preaching, like you think prosperity preaching is going to get you out of your religious state. You see, some people have this allegiance to prosperity doctrine, you know. They give not because they want God. They give because they want to get something. And they don't even believe that God is giving it to them. They give because they believe that the pastor or the preacher or the soothsayer have the ability to multiply. Not from God. Not from God. If they were just to give on to the work of God. They would not do it. Many people would not do it. They would not. But when you go into the church and all you want to hear day in, day out because of your religious state, your religious appetite, you just want to hear all these things. God have a blessing with your name on it. All your troubles will be gone away and you will be this and you will be that. What did the scripture say? What should we do in church? Matthew chapter 21. Yes, verse 13. And he said to them, It is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer. But you have made it into a den of thieves. Jesus was talking to those people who were conducting business within the church. That's what people are doing today. Religious people will conduct business in the church because they do not recognize it as a place that is holy. They do not recognize it as a place that should be consecrated. They recognize it as a place to get stuff. Call a house of prayer. But when you have some fake Preachers, fake soothsayers, and fake orators of the gospel speaking very eloquently, using words that you can't understand. Promising you the blessing plan. Telling you that the more you give in to my work, the more you will get. It's a pyramid scheme, I say to you. Go and invest your money in the stock market. But then that shakes some time and you lose everything, you know. The greatest investment is the investment in eternal life. The greatest investment is investment in eternal life. So woe to you who draw close to religion and prosperity. Woe to you who do not recognize the true and living God. Many of you, many of us, let me, put, let me start getting inclusive in here. Many of us. Do not regard the work of the Lord God Almighty. We regard the work of human hands. And we regard what we can get because of our religious affiliation. <coughs> and this is what God is saying when you do not regard him. You do not regard his work. Remember the scripture says without him there was nothing made that was made. And so you must regard him as the creator for everything. Psalm 28, look very carefully at verse 5. It says, because they do not regard the works of the Lord, nor the operation of his hands, he shall destroy them and not build them up. He shall destroy them and not build them up. Because you do not regard his work. Because you rather a religious affair, you rather spirituality, but not the Lord God Almighty. And so many people today believe in anything that is uttered or labeled as it is a new religion. Oh, it's a new religion? Oh, it's a progressive Christianity. Christianity can never progress 
Because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. What do you mean it's progressive? That means God changes? It's progressive because now you want to include everything. It's progressive because certain things in the Bible is too harsh. That is the reason God is outside of religion and outside of spirituality. That's the reason God is God. Many people are saying that God can never be like that. God can never be like that. God will not punish anyone because there's no such thing as hell. Really? 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 And then you love to hear those certain things. You love to hear that. But this is a portion of scripture talking about people who, who worship the beasts in the mark of the beast. But I just want to use it to give you an illustration of to pe as to people who owe allegiance to anything except God. Revelation chapter 14 verse 11 says, And the smoke of their torment ascend forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night. The smoke of their torment, the smoke of their torment, if you do not worship the Lord God Almighty, as it says in Psalm 28 verse 5, that he will destroy them and not build them up and so many people I say today like to run towards or be drawn towards things as labeled as religion or spirituality oh it's not so harsh you know come as you are come as you are yes you come as you are but you don't stay as you are you should be a new creation Renewing half your mind. But we don't like to renew our mind because many of us don't like to change. We like to fit into the whole mold. But you can't. You can't. Some of these religions are even telling people that don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. You have many ways to get to heaven. You have many ways to get to heaven, but I say to you, my brothers and sisters, if you believe such a thing, the scriptures have a description for you and classify you as simple. Proverbs 14, verse 15, it said, The simple believes every word, but the prudent considers well his steps. That is the reason those prosperity preachers and people who gravitate towards nonsense. They are so prosperous because the simple people who is running behind them believes everything that they say. Hold on to every word that they say. Sell your house and bring the money. They sell their house and bring the money. We're all going to heaven tomorrow. So sell all you have. Bring it to the church. Make the deposit in my account. Why are you making the deposit? Why are you even have to sell your house if you're going to heaven? Why do you care about what is going on right here? Why are you bringing your money to the preacher, man? Don't worry yourself. Make a sacrificial giving. Give me your rent money. God will provide. God did provide you already with your rent money. Why did you give it up? The simple believes everything. And I'm not saying that you cannot give a sacrificial giving. But were you instructed by God to do so? Did you receive that impression to do so? I said to you, Jesus did not preach religion or spirituality. I point to you in Matthew chapter 4, when it says, From the moment Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. <coughs> Jesus also left instruction for us on what we should do. But again, again, man don't like to follow the Bible. It's like, it's like most men, you know. Most men, you know, you get an instruction manual. To build this apparatus that you purchase. And you throw the manual out and you start to build it. Then when you're done building, you have 15 screws left over. I said, where, where should these go? We don't need them and you throw it out. And then you sit on the thing or you start working the thing and it starts making all sorts of funny noise and then it's destroyed. Because you do not read the instruction manual. What am I saying? The Bible, the Bible, the Bible is the instruction manual for mankind. When Jesus was ascending, Jesus said right here, right here, Matthew 28, verse 18, I'm picking up. All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations. I'm not even going into the baptizing and all of that because people, religious people want to turn that in all sort of stuff. 
We'll go into that another time. But go into and make disciples. How do you do that? By teaching people. This was not a message to go and relay prosperity. This was not a message to go and tell people that they're going to get rich. It says, make disciples. To make a disciple meaning you're going to make them into a follower. How are you going to do that? By teaching them, by educating them about the things of God. God has a blessing for all man. But the churches, a lot of churches won't tell you that. The only thing you hear is, you know, brethren, God has a blessing with your name on it. God has a blessing with your name on it. Sure, God has a blessing with your name on it. But the church don't want to tell you what that blessing is. The blessing that God has with our name on it is called grace and salvation. Titus chapter 2, look at verse 11 very, very carefully. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. And read on, look at 12. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present age. In this present age. In this present age, you live godly and soberly. You don't live because you want to live your best life now. When you live godly and soberly, you do as the scripture says in verse 13. Looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. That same God who I tell you about that is everywhere. The same God who never changes. But the church won't tell you that. The church won't tell you that God has given the blessing of grace and salvation to men. The church will tell you that if you don't have the fancy car, many churches will tell you that. And it's true. They equate blessing with stuff. Blessing with stuff, brethren. God give me such a blessing. Woo. I, I got that discount. I, I got that discount. I got that razor pay. Brethren, yes, it can be a blessing from God. But the blessing that you have from God and it's always there is grace and salvation. What are you going to say? What are you going to say if they take away that, they take away that promotion? What are you going to say if all that money that you earn, that you lose it, were you, never, you were never blessed? You, you, you were not blessed in the first place? What are you going to say to the brother or the sister that just live in a one-bedroom house? They are not blessed? What are you going to say to the brother or sister that don't, don't even have a pair of shoes on their feet? Are they not blessed? Brothers and sisters that have no food to eat, are they not blessed? Is it that God has forgotten them? You see, that's the reason God is outside of religion and outside of spirituality. Because religion will want to paint a rosy picture and make you feel that you are the chosen one when you're not even in the elect. God will overlook the ignorance of man. Acts 17 verse 30. It says, Truly these times of ignorance, God overlook. Now command all men everywhere to repent. Did it say God command all men everywhere into prosperity? To repent. To repent. Truly these times is a present situation. These times is a present situation. Get rid of your ignorance. All the religious acts and the spirituality. All the allegiance to the church and not to God. All the allegiance to the denomination and not to God. Stop following the man and follow after God. That pastor is not there so I'm not going to church today. <coughs> I'm not going today. But I tell you the truth. Look at this, Acts 17, 31. Because he has appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness <coughs> by the man whom he has ordained. Very carefully, appointed a judge. 
and that is Jesus. Appointed a judge, and that is Jesus. So those of you who have allegiance to the stuff and not to the judge, huh? <laughs> Your time will come. You're saying, I don't believe it. Jesus' is love is never coming to judge anyone. Jesus is love. What did the scripture say? Look at this. John 5, verse 22. For the Father judges no one, but has committed all judgment to the Son. Who is the Son? The Son is Jesus. That same loving Jesus that you want to still have as a little baby at Christmas time, cradling in a manger, shaking the little baby. That same Jesus who you think is a little chubby, red cheek baby. That same Jesus is going to judge you. He's going to judge you. He has given all judgment to the Son. The man whom he has ordained, that too is Jesus. You saying, Pastor man, I don't believe it. Okay. It's one of those things that I like to say, I don't care if you believe it. The scripture says so, and I believe it. You see, many people who are religious, they won't believe the Bible. They want to interpret it how they want to interpret it. And no, no prophecy of scripture is subjected to any personal interpretation. Acts 5. Let's look at Acts 5. 5 to 6. So also Jesus did not glorify himself to become high priest, but it was he who said to him, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. As he also said in another place, You are high priest forever in order of Melchizedek. That's the man who was ordained. That is Jesus Christ. So Acts 17 verse 32. Acts 17 verse 32. This is Paul. After Paul spoke. And when they heard of the resurrection of the dead. Some mock what others said. We'll hear you again in this matter. <coughs> Today we see people mocking the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We don't want to hear about those things right now. Just as in the day of Paul. People are mocking today. Just as in the day of Paul. Religious people don't want to hear when you bring certain scripture to them. That is too vile. We don't want to hear it. Let's cancel him. Let's not, let's, let's not, let's not um, give him any more views. Let's not watch. Let's not give any more offering. Let's not do these things to you. And they want to cancel you. But the scripture says right here in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 3, should comfort us. Knowing this first, that scoffers will come in the last days according, walking according to their own lusts. The scoffers will come. They come and they are here. And they are here in their religious state, in their spirituality. Scoffing at you and your Jesus. Because we have money in our pocket and we're living our best life now. We're not hungry. We don't need to subscribe to those foolishness anymore. We just gather and we sing feel good songs and we get a little message to make us feel good throughout the week. And so many places that should have been places of worship now are, and houses of prayer. They are just places of, of um, what do you call that? Places of, um, pros, um, of, of those sort of messages make you feel good. Feel good message centers. So those of us who are drawn to religion and prosperity but not to holiness through Jesus Christ. The day will come. The day will come when you have to make a choice. And so, I'm going to give you this from the scriptures to wake you up. And you better listen keenly. Acts chapter 3, verse 19. It says, Repent therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Acts 19 tells you to repent that your sins may be Wiped out. The times of refreshing may come from the Lord. There's no times of refreshing if it's not coming from God. 
And so if you're into religion and prosperity, but not into, I mean religion, prosperity, and spirituality, but not into Jesus Christ, not into holiness, then you're just playing church. And if those of you are in such a situation, affiliating with such people, it's time for you to leave. You say, Pastor, leave? Yes, I said to leave. The scripture says so. Ephesians 5, verse 11. And have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness. Rather, expose them. Remember the prophet Isaiah, what he said, lift up your voice like a trumpet, cry aloud. Tell them their transgression. And so, right here, the Apostle Paul says this. Have nothing to do with the unfruitful work of darkness, but rather expose them. And so, my brothers and sisters, this is not the usual Bible study, but this was something that you have to get. We talk about God, talk about religion, and we talk about spirituality. God is outside of religion and outside of spirituality. Those of us who belong to God, we hear his voice and we follow his teaching. Those of us who know who God is, we know that he is personal creator and that he is always with us. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Those of us who belong to God, we do not ascribe to religion or to spirituality, but to holiness. Be holy for I am holy. Amen.